Welcome to my backyard. My name is Joe, this is my backyard. It's a beautiful day today, and you know what? I'm in the mood to create some beautiful motion graphics, and we're gonna make some gradients today. So if you've been uh, paying attention to the ads that kind of go through your social media streams, you'll notice that gradients, especially really bright, poppy gradients, are uh, all the rage and they have been for some time because we love to see uh, subtle fall offs of colors and spectrums of colors. So let's go ahead and create one today in Camtasia and believe it or not, it's actually really easy to do. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate over to our uh, annotations bin and we're gonna select a just a basic square rectangle shape. I'm gonna open the bold style and I'm gonna grab one of these shapes. Now, one thing you'll wanna do before you start and I always neglect to mention this to start, is I wanna make sure that my project is set to 4K. That just allows me to create graphics that I know I can use in other uh, settings, other uh, you know canvas sizes without losing fidelity. So I have this really nice big shape. Now I'm gonna color that just as dark as I can, black. I'm gonna set the fill style to gradient. Now you say, okay, well, is that is that all, right? Just select a gradient and that's it? Well, I mean, that'll get you uh, part, part way there, but I wanna go further. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch this box out so that it's well beyond vertically uh, that canvas size. So we're, we're gonna go to about there. So it's, it's, I mean, if we go over to the properties here, it's like, if I'm at a 4K project, I'm looking at a uh, 5,000, 175 uh, pixels tall uh, rectangle here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate over to the visual effects and I'm gonna apply a color adjustment. Now this is one of the Camtasia hacks I think you'll really enjoy using with gradients. So I'm gonna drag that over that uh, call out shape and I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the color adjustment settings and max out the brightness. So I just want that to be as bright as possible. Now, if I zoom in, you can see we have a pretty nice looking white to black fall off. Now, if I get really close in there, you'll see there are there is what we call banding. And so it may not come through uh, for, for you on uh, YouTube here, but there is definitely some bands of, of strips of tone coming through. There's a way around this also. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw, go over to uh, annotation bin again. I'm gonna navigate over to this little droplet and this is my uh, sort of, there's blurs, there's highlights, there's pixelate in here, there's some cool effects. I'm gonna go ahead and select a favorited one I have here, but it's just a standard blur. And I'm gonna draw that rectangle so it's covering up the entire canvas. And if I zoom back in, you can see the banding is gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and group these two things. And I'm gonna call that, uh, let's call it our black white gradient. Okay, now, we have a gradient. It looks pretty good. It's smooth. We've reduced some of the banding. It's a good white to black. But what if you want beautiful color? Uh, I, for one, would love to get some beautiful color in there. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the visual effects again. It's my favorite bin. I live in it. And I'm going to grab color tint. Now, color tint has a really cool feature. It looks at the light tone and it looks at the dark tone and it allows me to remap those tones to a color. So you can see by default, our default effect looks pretty darn nice. And if I take the intensity all the way up to 100, I have my white replaced with this magenta and my black replaced with this really nice indigo. So just like that, I've got a beautiful gradient. But if you want to go in and make it your own, let's say I pick um, green. That looks kind of nice against that indigo. And, uh, and maybe I want green to go against um, the blue. You know, that's a kind of a nice indigo. It looks a little bit like our placeholder color, uh, if you've played with our placeholder media type. So there's some really cool things you can do here. What if we want to make like a, a sunset? So what if I said, okay, let's make uh, this red and, and let's make a this gold, right? That's kind of beautiful, isn't it? So I can do some really cool things out of the box here. And I encourage you just to play until you get that look and maybe you map to your personal brand here. Uh, I'm gonna go with the old uh, green and indigo. I just am a sucker for that. In fact, I might even go for a more of an RGB green um, because it's just so darn intense and uh, I love it. So that's a pretty beautiful gradient, but I wanna go even further. So let's go ahead and make this whole box large is as large let's double it to its current size and uh and i'm gonna go ahead and recenter it and you can see just like that i'm able to like play with some of the nuances of that uh, of that gradient but what if i take it and i center it and i just start to rotate it and if i just make it a little bit taller 
it's a little bit more, I'll just go a little bit more than, than double. And you can see I'm able to kind of move it around and get that just that perfect angle. And just like that, I've got a really beautiful gradient. Now, an extra pro tip, if you wanna add some um, more sort of, of a dynamic look to this gradient, try using uh, elements inside of Camtasia to create textures. So one of the tricks I like to use is I'll use text and a really simple text element you can use, I'm just using a text call out right now, is just create a bunch of plus symbols. So if I just go in and just draw a bunch of pluses, so I'll draw a couple lines of them, and, uh, and you're saying, wow, where is he going with this one? I promise you it's gonna look pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those, and I'm gonna navigate over to the text uh, callout settings, and I'm gonna just start messing with vertical spacing, messing with horizontal spacing until I get things about where I want them. And once I get to about there, I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see if I can add a couple more plus symbols just so I can get it nice and square. So just like that, I have some plus symbols map, you know, sort of covering the whole canvas. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the, the call out color, text color here and I'm gonna select the eyedropper tool, and I'm just gonna go somewhere in the middle of that canvas, you know, it's where, where those sort of gradients start to, to um, converge, or those two colors converge in the gradient. And I'm gonna select one of those colors, and you can see if I look in the upper left, I can see the pluses. In the middle, it kind of disappears, and then the lower left, it reappears. So this is kind of a neat way to add some texture to a gradient. And one of the effects you can do to bring that to life is going over to behaviors, and adding our fade behavior. And I'm just gonna go over to the fade properties and select during, and I'm gonna have that fade also. And if I just hit spacebar in preview here, you'll see this nice little effect, super subtle, but a, but a neat effect emerges. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out and make it just a, a little bit longer. So let's have it go to, let's say roughly 10 seconds or so. All right, and uh, and let's go ahead and make this one last effect here is make the gradient rotate. So if I grab that gradient, now I'm just gonna go over to my annotations, grab a custom annotation, and I'm gonna stretch that all the way out so it goes the full duration. The animation will, will go the full duration of the media here. And, uh, and let's just go ahead and rotate this. I'm currently at uh, negative 115, and, uh, and at our endpoint, let's just have it go to say, um, negative 450 or so. And in fact, I might even go to 500, oops, negative 500. Okay, so we got almost a full circle there. If I go and hit space bar, I get this really beautiful dynamic gradient effect. The last thing you can do, bonus round, is apply this to a call out. And how could you use this as a fill for a call out? Well, let's go ahead and group this. And I'm just gonna call this group uh, call out fill gradient. And I'm just gonna grab one of my favorite gradients or one of my favorite call outs, which in this case, let's let's use the, uh, the old cloud here. And I'm gonna drag that down and I'm gonna stretch it out find the tail, let's say we're calling out maybe even just the call out box here in my uh, presentation. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select that, sh that object, make sure the media goes the full span of that group I just created. And I'm gonna create two of those. One will be used for the text and the other will be used for the shape, the alpha shape because I'm gonna use this for a track map. So if I navigate over on the track that's on, track two, there's an eyeball. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that eyeball and you'll see track map modes. I'm gonna go ahead and select alpha. And just like that, if I go ahead and hit space bar, I have a really cool call out treatment and it didn't take very long to achieve at all. In fact, it was actually super fun. I hope you're able to use this technique in your videos. Any extra polish you can do for your end viewers is gonna go a long way in making that video engaging and memorable. Um, so explore, have fun, check out the description. I've included this project so you can play with it yourself and be sure to like and subscribe and explore the world of motion graphics. Look forward to hearing from you soon, thanks.